Hey everyone, and welcome back to the channel. My name is Johnny. I'm so happy you're uh, tuning in today. So I, I bought a piece of mesquite wood uh, through an auction a while back, and I had it sitting in my in the garage all summer. And I was like, you know, I always wanted to make a river table, and I said, why not now? So it was a beautiful piece. Uh, I have since cut it in half, uh, measured the, the measurements out to make the river table. I've also made a, um, a mold for the epoxy. The epoxy comes in this week, and so I'm prepping uh, everything now. So I took a piece of melamine, um, and I got it at you know, your local hardware store, and cut it down to the width that I wanted and the length that I wanted it. Uh, and so I screwed it together uh, with screws, and then I uh, covered it in Tyvek tape. Now the Tyvek tape, for anybody that's done work with epoxy, it's supposed to uh, keep the epoxy from sticking to the mold so it makes it easier when you're done to break it apart. So, uh, so once I put that together, my next step, I just vacuumed everything out to make sure there's no dust. And I uh, will put some caulk on it uh, to seal the edges to make sure no epoxy leaks. Uh, so I will put this back here, but I'll show you where I'm at with my my board. So my boards, like I said, I cut it to 43 inches long and the, it's going to be about 22 inches wide. So the table I'm going to be making is a um, epoxy river table for a coffee table. Um, and the inlay is going to be a black epoxy. Thought it'd be kind of a slick, cool look and something super modern. Uh, so my plan with it is to make the tabletop, do it a 45 degree chamfer with the router bit on the bottom. Uh, to kind of give it just a modern look and then I'm ordering some hairpin legs off online and I'll put all the links to the stuff uh, below in this video so at the end I'll be putting the, um, the hairpin legs on so it'll be a journey because I've never used hairpin legs before uh, this is all new to me so I'm, I'm pretty excited and hey I might screw up and who knows we'll see where it goes but for today what I'm going to be showing you guys is I have everything ripped um, and so what I'm going to be doing is I'm going to take off the bark on one side and then what I'm going to do is sand everything down uh, so the edges are smooth and get it ready for a seal coat uh, for the epoxy. So before I do a deep pour, I have to coat the side. So I'll be doing that, sanding, getting everything prepped. So all I have to do is epoxy it. I've already done um, one side of it and all I have to do is sand it now. And then the other thing I'm going to be showing you guys today is um, I have to flatten the bottom side with my, uh, my planer. Um, and I have a 13 inch planer. And thankfully this is wide enough to fit through my planer. Otherwise I'd have to use my router jig. So on bigger pieces, you're gonna use a router jig to flatten. I don't have to do that right now because I'm just gonna be um, using my planer and then a, a, a straight board jig that I'll use for shims and I'll show you guys how that works. So uh, that's enough talking, let's get started. Uh, so the first thing I'm going to do is take the bark off and uh, we'll get to work. What I'm going to do next is I'm actually going to not sand it right away. I'm actually going to uh, flatten it. So I'm going to uh, take this over to the planer, run it through until one side is flat. I'm only doing the bottom right now so it lays flat in the, uh, the mold. And then I'm going to have to uh, flatten the whole thing again, the top, after the epoxy is set because it'll kind of raise up and stuff. And so I'll take a little bit more off and I'll just do the, the top at that point. Um, so right now I will um, take it to the planer and we will flatten one side. All right, for this next part, I uh, am going to be flattening our slab, which is pretty cool. And normally I would do this on a router jig, but it's short enough to where I can uh, run it through my cleaner using a sled. So the sled's pretty easy. You just get a flat piece on the end. You place your slab on it, and then you find the rock or the twist, and then you use shims uh, to flatten it. As you push the board through a planer, it's going to follow um, the board. So if it has a twist in it, it's going to keep that twist. Now the way to get it out 
is to shim it so it won't move with the rollers. I learned this off YouTube, uh, a couple of different guys do it. Um, I thought it was a really cool way to get a twist out of the board. It took me a while to get it right. Um, and you, the biggest thing is you want to make sure uh, whatever you're using as your reference is flat. You know, it can't have a twist in it. Um, so I actually, right now I'm using a piece of MDF, um, which is pretty flat. And, um, and so that's my reference point. Okay guys, so this is what I did. Uh, this is my board here, and that's the, um, the stop. So when I push it through, it's not gonna you know, push the board through as well uh, and separate it from the bottom board. Because uh, if you don't have that, the rollers will slide it through. And sometimes the bottom piece sticks and the top piece doesn't. So the top, it just becomes a mess and you won't get what you need. It slides off the, the shims and everything. So it can be a pain. So make sure you have that that board there. And what I did is I just took a piece of MDF and glued it to the um, the other piece of MDF. I do not recommend using screws because if you're using it on a smaller board and it, and it ends up being shorter than the other piece, if you're running through your planer, you can have uh, chipped blades and all that fun stuff. So I wouldn't recommend that. But this is what I did. So I took the um, the piece and you can kind of see. I'll try to see if I can get it there. You see that that has a cup in it. So I shimmed it on the side, so when you, when the rollers press down, it's not going to um, press the piece of wood down, and it'll truly get a flat surface. So this is kind of just a little hack, um, so you don't have to, you know, get a jointer or um, use a router jig for shorter pieces. You can use your planer, and it works pretty fairly well. The other thing I recommend is just um, I hot glued. I can't really see that there, but I hot glued a lot around the edge that's way it just you know you want to make sure the piece is secure to the bottom board you want to make sure the piece is uh, secure to the other piece so that way it moves through the planer as one unit so what I'm going to do now and this is where I recommend highly uh, when you're using a lot of equipment make sure you use earbuds and eye protection uh, because anything can happen when you're using that stuff so what I'm going to do is put my protection on and Go over to the planer setup and uh, run it through the planer, and then we'll do another the next board as well. So, uh, hang tight. Thought I'd take a quick moment to pause and show you that you see that there's a high spot here that it's taken down, and the rest is not so as you go through you'll see uh, um, more and more material come off and you want to go until everything is flat Okay, everyone, so I planed everything down. So this is the bottom. Um, I also, like I said, I removed all the bark and I sanded it at 80 grit and I wiped it down and uh, vacuumed it off. The last thing I wanna do is just kind of show you what it's gonna look like in the mold. And then next video we can uh, get to pouring, which would be awesome. So as you can see, um, this is how it is going to look. Um, so when my epoxy comes in this week, I will mix it and I will pour it and that will be the next video. Hey guys, thank you so much for tuning in today. I hope you learned something. I hope you enjoyed it. Uh, if you have any questions, leave it down in the comments below. In the next video, stay tuned because I'll be pouring the epoxy and uh, we will be going through that process. This is gonna, going to be my first big pour. so. 
a lot can go wrong, but hopefully I'm uh, pretty excited to see how it will turn out, and I think it's going to be pretty nice. Um, so thank you so much for tuning in. If you haven't already, please click the like button below and hit subscribe for new videos. Uh, I really appreciate your time, and until next time, we'll see you later. Bye-bye.